guys. Hey guys, what's up? So, once again, I'm here with you people and today we'll be talking about another important topic from the first chapter chemical reactions and equations. And uh, this topic basically talks about how we are going to write a chemical equation and how we are going to balance it. So see, let me start uh, reading the topic. The topic says we have to write a chemical equation. Like how to start writing a chemical equation. See, you now know, right, what is a chemical equation? So whenever a chemical reaction takes place, that is termed as a chemical equation, right? So for example, I have written carbon burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Oh wow, yes, this is a chemical reaction, right? Because carbon is burning with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Now, another equation if I write, hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water. Yes, we know that both of these are the two chemical reactions that I have written. But, is it easy to write the reactions again and again in words like this? Like in the complete sentence? Don't you think it's too long? It's such a time-consuming task, right? So, let's see what is a better way to write the chemical equation. If I talk about a better way for representing a chemical equation, I can rather write this thing as carbon plus oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Oh, that's better cool, right? Hydrogen plus oxygen to form water. That is also cool. So, I can simply say whatever you have written. So, first of all, draw an arrow. Okay. Now, whatever you write on the left hand side of the arrow will be reactants. Reactants means something which is combining together. And whatever new things are formed will be termed as products. So, at least I am sure that this is not a better way, but this is a better and a simple way of representing a chemical equation. But now, the question is, is there any other better way for representing a chemical equation? If yes, what is that? Okay, then let's see. Now I'll tell you about the best way for the representation of a chemical equation, which is using the symbols for atoms, molecules and ions. And yes, guys, this is the same thing that I have, that I have already taken up in the previous videos where I told you how to write the formula of chemical compounds, right? So we better start using the chemical formula instead of words. Words are like too messy, too lengthy. So instead of using words, it's better to start writing the chemical formula for representation of a chemical equation. Like for example, the same above equation I could have written as C, because C stands for carbon, for oxygen we write O2 to form carbon dioxide. Oh wow, this is even a precise way, right? So this is the best way for the representation of a chemical equation. Similarly, you can see hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water. Again, I can say divide it into two parts. Whatever is written on the left hand side of the arrow is reactants. Whatever is written on the right hand side of the arrow is the product. Okay, so we can simply say a chemical equation represents a chemical reaction which is taking place. This is what we studied from NCRT that day also, right? Now, but the question arises, what is the next question that comes to our mind? Is this way of representing the chemical equation 100% correct? No. The answer is no. And why is it so? You must have heard something related to conservation of mass. What is conservation of mass? Which states that mass can neither be created nor it can be destroyed in a chemical reaction. So whenever a chemical reaction occurs, mass can neither be created nor it can be destroyed. That means whatever is the total mass of the reactants will always be equal to the total mass of the products. Right? Or I can say the total number of atoms which are present on the left hand side, they should be conserved. Nothing should be happening to the atoms. So, can I say that the total number of atoms of all the kinds should be same on both the sides of the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. Right? Like for example, let me explain you what I wanted to say. For example, let us see this equation which I have written C plus O2 to form CO2. Okay, let's count the number of carbon and oxygen atom on both the sides of the arrow. So here on the left hand side of the arrow, how many carbon atoms are there? One. Cool. How many carbon atoms are there on the right hand side? One. That means I can say carbon atoms are same. Let us count the number of oxygen atoms. How many oxygen, at oxygen atoms are here? Two. 
how many oxygen atoms are here two oh wow so that means number of oxygens are also same so this kind of equation is known as a balanced chemical equation balanced why because the number of atoms of each side is same on both the side of the left hand side and the right hand side right however if i take another example the second example that we considered earlier which is h2 plus o2 to form h2o let's count the number of hydrogen atoms 2 2 good so number of hydrogen atoms is balanced let's count the number of oxygen atoms on left hand side you can see the number of oxygen atoms are 2 Let's see on right hand side the number of oxygen atom is just one, but how is this possible? You started with two atoms of oxygen on left hand side, but you ended up with just one atom of oxygen. No, right? This is something wrong, and such kind of equations are known as unbalanced chemical equations. Okay, so all these categories of equations are classified as a skeletal chemical equation. Skeletal means it is just a skeletal that doesn't give you the hundred percent result. You need to look forward to doing something for the skeletal chemical equation so as to convert it into the perfect chemical equation, right? So having discussed this thing, now we know what is the importance of a balanced chemical equation. so we know for a balanced chemical equation the total number of atoms on the left hand side of reaction should be same as the total number of atoms of each kind on the right hand side of the reaction and thus we come on to our another topic which is balancing of chemical equation now at least by this point of time you people could understand that there is a big requirement for balancing the chemical equations so now i'll start telling you what are the steps which you need to follow to balance a chemical equation listen to me for the first step you have to write the symbols of reactants and products separated by an arrow which is what we have already done second step which is not important which is not necessary but yes if you follow this it's uh, one of the very good things you are going to do for balancing the reactions which states that always put all the formulas in some boxes boxes or you call them dabbas so you need to put all the formulas in the boxes and it is very very important step it will help you avoid lot many mistakes okay moving on to the third step you have to figure out what are independent and dependent formula now let me tell you what do we mean by dependent and independent formulas see that is how i do the balancing of equations and this has worked for almost all the equations i have ever come across so if you also follow this thing i think it's going to be helpful to you see what is dependent formula like for example i have written the formula of co2 okay how many carbon atoms let me put it in a box and write one uh, before this so how many carbon atoms one how many oxygen atoms 1 into 2 will be 2 so there will be two oxygen atoms and one carbon atom now let us say instead of writing one here i am writing two here okay now if you write two in front of the box can you tell me the number of carbon atoms now carbon atoms will be two what will be the number of oxygen atoms 2 into 2 will come out to be 4 that means dependent formulas or dependent uh, compounds are those compounds like if you put some some integer in front of which the number of both the atoms involved will get changed right such are known as such are known as the dependent compounds or the dependent formula let's talk about one another example let us consider the example of water water let's say write this write a one here how many hydrogen atoms two how many oxygen atoms one Okay if i write 5 here how many hydrogen atoms 5 into 2 will be 10 and how many oxygen atoms 5 into 1 will be 1 1 into 5 will be 5 right that means on writing something in front of the box the number of both the atoms got changed and such are known as dependent formulas okay now let us talk about the independent species what are independent species so independent species consist of all the atoms but of one element only that means they are not dependent on any other element for example i have written o2 i am writing one here what is the number of oxygen atoms 2 if i write let's say 10 here what is the number of oxygen atoms 20 but is it changing the number of nitrogen atoms is it changing the number of uh, carbon atoms no that means on changing the integer in the front of the box number of only one particular atom got changed not for all the atoms and such species are known as independent species okay 
Now listen to the fourth step. You need to keep aside the independent species will balance them at last. So all the independent species first of all you have to figure it out what is the independent species and then you have to keep it aside do not even touch it will balance it will look into it at last okay but uh, why is it so this is because they are independent that means if we change their coefficient they won't change the number of atoms of any other element okay one one important thing which I forgot to tell you the numbers which you are writing in front of the box this number this is also known as a coefficient or you can also call it as a stoichiometric coefficient okay so you can simply call it as SC or stoichiometric coefficient or simple coefficient okay now let me tell you the fifth step the fifth step says if hydrogen and oxygen are there in the reaction you need to balance them at last so see what I said first of all you balance all the other things available hydrogen and oxygen keep for last and yes the independent species you will balance even after balancing the hydrogen and oxygen okay and will first balance all the metals and non-metals so first now let me just uh, define everything what we have done so first of all you have to write the equation for example a plus b to form c so keep the reactants on left hand side products on right hand side that is the first step the second step that you have to follow is you have to keep all of them in a box so keep all of them in boxes okay that is the second step third step is for example let us say C is independent so just leave it we'll balance it at last now let us say out of A and B A is metal or non metal so we'll balance A first let's say hydrogen and oxygen are there they'll be balanced after the balancing of metals and non metals and at last we'll balance the independent species that is it you just need to follow these many steps and you'll be able to do every kind of question okay so now let us try to do one example and this example I have taken now I'll try to cover all the NCRT equations so whatever NCRT equations are given in the first chapter we'll try to cover all of them let us start with the first example which is magnesium plus oxygen to form magnesium oxide how to write it mg plus o2 to form mgo now one thing i would like to tell you all very carefully whenever like i have seen so many students i am simply saying magnesium plus oxygen and instead of writing oxygen as o2 they will just write it as o no if oxygen oxygen means it is o2 it is not elemental oxygen o so this is the first thing you need to keep in mind similarly if it is hydrogen plus oxygen hydrogen is h2 and not h okay if it is carbon plus oxygen it is C plus O2 because carbon exists in elemental nature whereas oxygen exists as a diatomic molecule so you need to mention you need to take care of all these facts okay so okay you have written Mg plus O2 to form MgO then what is the next step you have to put all of them in a box Mg plus O2 to form MgO you have kept it in a box okay now one another thing which is very important that you need to remember this is you can't change anything in the box you can just put a number before the box which is known as stoichiometric coefficient do not ever try to write this for example it is O2 and let's say we have to make four atoms of oxygen please do not change two instead of four no this is not allowed let us say if it is MgO you do not write two here you can't write two here you can't write three here nothing you cannot write anything in the box whatever you have to do you can do only outside the box now outside the box also there are two cases let's say students can do this or students can do this so you can only write here not here because this is already I have told you this will change the entire molecule so whenever I'm saying write two always two has to be written as a stoichiometric coefficient in front of the box not in the box not behind the box okay so let let us enclose this in boxes and let's try to count the number of all the atoms which are present on both the left hand side and the right hand side how many magnesium atoms are present on left hand side it's only one on right hand side one how many oxygen atoms are present on uh, left hand side it's two on right hand side it's one so this is balanced but this is not balanced right and as per I told you I cannot write this I cannot write this but I need to make two oxygens here so how can I do so I can do so by putting a two in the front of the box cool enough but see when I have kept a two here again what you need to do is to check the number of magnesium as well as oxygen on both the sides now let's again count 
how many oxygens two how many oxygens two how many magnesium on the left hand side one how many magnesium on right hand side two again that is wrong right so what should i do i should put a two in front of magnesium so a two has to be kept here not here so finally i'll write 2 mg plus 1 o2 to form 2 mg and let's finally check how many magnesium on left hand side two how many magnesium on right hand side two how many oxygen on left hand side two how many oxygens on right hand side two so when the number of all the atoms on left hand side and right hand side are balanced that means this is a balanced chemical equation and that's it so this was about all the rules and one of the example which i have discussed with you people now in the next video i'll discuss some more examples thank you very much